friend of mine um, is having a Bible study every Tuesday morning with, the, with ladies, these ladies from the Jehovah's Witness Church huh. or synagogue, whatever they call it. I don't know what they are. Uh, Kingdom Temple. Hall. Kingdom Hall. Kingdom Hall. And she is, um, my friend is, uh, knows the Bible well. Yeah. And, and it's not, she doesn't say it's combative at all, but she said so many people kick him to the curb. She invited him in and wanted me to come to the Bible study. I used to have a maid in Nashville who was Jehovah's Witness, and I'd leave her extra money at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And she would say, thank you for the money, would never acknowledge Christmas. I'm not, and I come to find out they don't, mm -hmm. what, celebrate Christmas? Yeah. What's the story on them? Well, there's a lot of stories on them. I think the big differentiation is that it goes historically back to the Arian uh, Athanasius controversy. Woo. Way back uh, when they came up with the Nicene Creed. You know, you could make stuff like that up and people would think you're brilliant. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it goes back to the Philippian yeah, yeah, taka yeah, 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 yeah. And then when the Assyrians came down from Assyria and defeated the uh, Texans. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the truth. Okay, tell me the truth. The truth is that the early Christians were so busy talking about the resurrected Jesus and the change that Jesus was bringing about in their lives that they never actually formulated a theology until about the, maybe about 70 or 80 years after the church was, you know, they said, let's get together and really formulate things. 70 what is, years after what? After the, after the day of Pentecost. After Pentecost? Yeah, where well, they really got around to formulating their theology. They were preaching Christ, they were preaching the resurrected Lord, they were preaching the salvation. But do they need any more than that? Well, 70 years at work. Yeah, it worked fine. But they came a point where heresies began to emerge. And the first really big heresy uh, really revolved around the question of who is Jesus. Was Jesus really God? Or was he a creation of God? Now, we as evangelical Christians say, oh no, Jesus was God incarnate, God in human flesh, God becoming one of us to reveal himself to us, as it says in the first Jehovah chapter. on foot. You got what it. I call it. What they would say is, no, Jesus is a creation of God. He is a literally a son of God. He is not God himself. And, and they changed John 1:1 1, 1 too. Yeah. In the beginning was the word and the word became and the word was a God. Yeah. They put the a in there. Yeah, isn't that something? So they 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 really that that's an old heresy. Was is Jesus God or is he a creation of God? That would be their first difference. And can he save you? What here's the next question. Can you know Christ if you do not believe that he is God? I don't know. I, I you know, people do say... Do you have to believe or even know about the virgin? The bigger question is, could you have a relationship with Christ... And have a lousy theology. And have lousy theology. I think all of us do. Yeah, but could I you... Think, I think if you mean by heresy... Somebody who has... What's this, yeah, that's the difference. If heresy and a lousy theology, yeah, what well, is the difference? Well, I'm not sure that there is a difference. I think that in reality we're all heretics. If you mean by heresy, somebody who has a distorted view of the truth, none of us see through the glass purely. We all see through the glass darkly. One day, someday, each of us is going to have to have our theology uh, Well, you've already out. been through a heresy trial. Yeah, that's right. All of us have to, in fact, have our, our theologies corrected. This, this is, the, none of us have the whole truth. We know in part, we prophesy in part, say the scripture itself. I'm not ready to say that Jehovah, a, a particular Jehovah Witness is saved or lost. Leave judgment in the hands of God. What I am here to say is their theology is contrary to Christianity in its purest form. That's what I will say. Their theology is unchristian. I will say that. That's my judgment. I'm judging their theology. There's a big difference between judging somebody's theology oh, yes. and judging somebody. And you know what? When they get offended that you've judged their theology is because, okay, it's like this. If I came up to you and said, Tony, you know, I don't like your, um, your bald head. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing you can do about your bald head. Yeah. But if I say, I don't like the way you think about Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever... To some people, it's like you're offending them when you, when you, when you question their theology yeah. rather than, I'm not saying you're ugly. There's yeah. nothing you can do about being ugly. Yeah. I'm saying your theology's messed up. Well, my mother's sort of like that. 
she takes her theology very personally it's to the yeah. point of it's immovable, it's unshakable, it won't budge. And so how do you... When we see Christ face to face on Judgment Day and our theologies are straightened out, I think we're going to look back and say, we thought we were so profound. Oh. We thought we were in such deep truth. Yeah. We were children. We didn't... Yes. We, we just... I, I think mean, we, I think we will be rewarded for at least hunting it. Yeah, that's we're right. hunting it. Yeah, you know, we're curious. Right. And what healthy father wouldn't love to pass his children in their room talking about him? Yeah, let's try to figure out, Daddy. We want to be just like Daddy. I like that. I like that. Yeah. You know, uh, there's I think a we'll be all right. great story of Pope John. You know, the twenty third, the guy that, that called the Vatican Council several years ago, who's opened up the Catholic Church to other religions because they were very narrow up till then. Mm -hmm. Pope John, uh, to pick up your theme, uh, was, became famous when he was Cardinal of Bologna uh, because he was the only guy that they had in the Roman Catholic Church. He knows more facts. <laughs> How does he know these facts? <laughs> he, he earned his reputation because he was the only Roman Catholic Cardinal who was able to negotiate with the communists in Italy. Okay. And the communists were the dominant party at that time. And he was coming out of a meeting with the head of the Communist Party. Okay. And he had his arm around the guy. And he made, somebody overheard him make this statement to the head of the Communist Party. He said, see, Pasquale, I told you, the only thing that separates us is our convictions. Boy. What an interesting statement. You see, we're good friends. We love each other. We affirm each other. But let's not minimize the fact that we, our convictions are very different from each other. Right. But let's not allow our convictions to separate, to separate us. We will love each other yes. and be friends in spite of the fact that our convictions are very well, different. Well, how can you win them or woo them or them win, win you or woo you if you don't connect, exactly. right? Exactly. You've got to be friends first. You've got to be friends. Live, you know, one of my friends, uh, Brennan Manning, you probably heard him speak. Love before. him. Brennan Manning says this. You cannot carry out the Great Commission, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Right. You cannot carry out the Great Commission until you first carry out the Great Commandment. You've got to love oh, your yeah. neighbor as you love yourself. Right. Then yeah. after you love your neighbor, then you can carry out the Great Commission. Okay. I think a lot of people try to carry out the Great Commission without first carrying out the Great Commandment. Right. They're not loving, they just come and pounce on people and drop their gospel on them without any affectional connection with the person to whom they are speaking. And it, it doesn't seem to last. No. I mean, uh, it's like it's a notch on the belt. We, I used to do that. I mean, I'd get on planes and I'd pray that God would let me figure out a way of witnessing to the person next to me because I could see the flames of hell licking at their bottom. Everybody, and if I didn't tell them, their blood would be on my hands. Yeah. And that's the way I was taught. And since I have given up that theology of the, the weight of the world is on my shoulders, the weight of the world was on his shoulders, and I have fallen in love with him. I, I used to fear him, but I have fallen in love with him. Yeah. Where it's easy to talk about him. And it's not, a, it's not like I'm trying to cram him down somebody's throat. I might just be watering the seed or planting the seed and let somebody else do the harvest. Let, let me lay one more thing on you.